Hello and welcome each and every one of you. Joining me today is Rich Stone, who kindly agreed to come on our show and uh, give me answer some few questions I came up after I watched his show with Jackie White. Uh, this show will be on my uh, Facebook page, DCT Center Facebook page, and also on my website, www.dctcenter.com. Uh, I would highly recommend to watch the show as well, because then this one show will make more sense, possibly. Uh, hello and welcome, Rich. I really appreciate you came on my show. And hey, Daga. Thank, thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, all good. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, all going well. Uh, cracking on and busy, busy. But uh, it's good to be chatting with you and uh, spreading the good word of crypto and helping anyone where I can. Rich, maybe now I will let you take a lead and you do how you be planning to do this all, yeah? Yeah, sure. So we had some questions uh, from the from the video from the last interview uh, that um, you sent me, and maybe we could just go through those questions, and I could maybe try and explain them and and go from there, and then I can share my screen and see uh, see if I can answer some questions for you. How does that you, sound? You should be able to share screen now. Yeah, let me just. Uh, Double click on that. Okay, brilliant. So um, can you see my screen? Yes, perfectly. Brilliant, okay, fantastic. I'm gonna stick you there. I think that is good. You can see everything. Brilliant. So um, so if we go back to those uh, questions, do you, do you have some of those questions on hand, Diger? Because I think yes. one of them or, or because yeah, like you said, this really is kind of like a part two, really. To to, to it's like a follow on from the video I did, uh, the interview I did with Jackie White. So um, it would definitely make sense for people to maybe watch that one first, and then this one would make more sense because we're kind of going more into certain points, aren't we? Yes, I I just think maybe give like a broad summary about what happened on on Tavan show. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so the video, the interview I did with Jackie White what, uh, about a week or two ago, uh, it was basically just doing a a basic overview or an introduction to Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and why I think you should be paying attention to it. So I outlined uh, what it is, where it came, where it kind of came from, and uh, why it's basically here. So in a nutshell, uh, Bitcoin. Um, is a decentralized crypto uh, de decentralized um, cryptocurrency. It's a, a form of digital currency, and it's also a payment payment network outside of central bank and government control. And without going into it too much, um, because of our current monetary system, it is on the brink of collapse. It has been for many years, and because of central banks and governments intervening. Uh, and just causing a lot of problems, basically. Um, back in 2008, 2009, a group of people, or maybe just one person, a male or, a, or male or female, who went by the pseudonym name of Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, no one truly knows who it is, but there are some clues to who they, who we believe it is. Um, Basically, some very smart computer people designed a payments network and a digital currency outside of the current system. And uh, this was after the 2008 financial crisis uh, with all the central banks printing money. Well, well, number one, it was the banks that created the global financial crisis and the taxpayers bailed them out, as always. Um, and then... Um, we have just seen the absolute uh, destruction of our currencies, uh, fiat currency, which fiat stands for government issued or government backed, which is com which is complete. It's, it's, it's just a complete myth. It's, it's, it's backed by nothing. It's just the illusion we have that we believe that there's actual uh, value behind this 
made up currency they, that, 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 that they create out of thin air is, is wild, but we won't go into that too much tonight. Um, so yeah, so basically it's 2008, 2009, up popped this thing called Bitcoin, fast forward to the present day, it's just built massive traction and um, more and more people around the world are using it. And also from Bitcoin, because Bitcoin was a pretty much like a peer-to-peer payments network, there has been an explosion of innovation and technology uh, with all these different blockchains and cryptocurrencies coming out. And we are seeing an absolute explosion in this new uh, technology that we know as something called blockchain. And blockchain, put very simply, is a database, uh, a network that allows us, uh, that runs on top of the internet, that allows anyone in the world to connect to and be part of a system um, that is decentralized, meaning that it is, it, it is not controlled by a central authority, uh, a central server, um, and is very hard to actually shut down. So it really is quite a thing. It puts power back into the people's hands, and and that's what kind of grabbed me. So so yeah, that so we we touched on that. We we touched on the history of money um, and all its different forms, and then we went through on a basic level. Um, how you uh let's say buy it from an exchange uh and then how you store it uh and then we touched on markets and the market cycles uh we touched on like be be mindful of scams because we're all good there sadly is some bad um so but what i'm going to do actually is because diver one of your questions you, you asked was could you produce a list of some of these scams and uh I found a website that actually has a, a big long list that I think was updated this year of um, a lot of scams. And I, uh, we, we can touch on that in a bit when we come to it. But um, so, yeah, so that, that was basically what we went over. But um, if you watch the, the YouTube video with Jackie White, um, I think it's about an hour and a half long and um, it should give you a basic understanding. And then at the end of the video, I had a resource page which um, which had a list of all different people that I follow and I listen to. And if, if you want to kind of like go uh, go down the rabbit hole and understand it on a better uh, level, that's a great starting point. So, yeah, so th that was basically that. And then moving on to tonight, um, should we start maybe going to some of these questions and then we can just kind of go with the flow and see, see how it goes? Yeah, let's start. I... I created those questions when I watch video. That was like one slide after another, which came on my mind what I would ask, wanted to know more. Yeah. Let's say from very beginning of this uh, presentation, you said that there will be only 21 million Bitcoin created. One Bitcoin is 100 million Satoshi. Yeah? Yeah. I hope I pronounce right. That's correct, yeah. Satoshi. My, my question was straight away when I saw this uh, slide where was all this farm or, or, or mind where, where is all those computers, yeah? Yeah. When I, when I saw that slide, yeah, this slide, a straight away uh, for me came up question why why will be only this 21 million why that not possible to build another line of this uh, computers there where is yes. the problem so bitcoin was the first real successful cryptocurrency again created really in 2008 2009 <clears throat> and um the the thing is with uh uh, traditional currencies or I should say fiat currencies which are backed by nothing they used to be backed by gold uh, but fiat currency is backed by absolutely nothing um, we came off the gold standard 100% uh, in 1971 however um, it, 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 the governments and central banks create money out of thin air okay and what we don't or what a lot of people don't truly understand is for every pound or euro or dollar that is created, it, it destroys the value. It, 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 it uh, leaks value. So um, 
our currency supply has just gone through the roof since when we came off the gold standard um, and um, it, it completely cripples um, people like you and I um, who are not, let's say, in the inner circles of the central banking system and government. Um, so to have a currency or to create a currency or a form of money that is actually capped, um, has a capped supply is very powerful because you cannot keep inflating it. You cannot debase the value. Um, you cannot create it out of thin air. So the 21 million, why 21 million? So I think there's a couple of different theories, but the theory that kind of really grabs me and makes more sense to me is when Satoshi, at the time, 2008, 2009, um, I'm just gonna say he, because I, I believe it was Hal Finney, um, uh, who sadly passed away a few years ago, but let's say Satoshi. Um, at the time, um, uh, it, 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 was a, it was a estimated guess because Satoshi wanted to create a, the amount of units in however many units, when, when a Bitcoin is broken down into 100 million Satoshi, so Satoshi is like saying there's 100 pennies in a pound, there's 100 million Satoshi in, a, in one Bitcoin. So at the time, I believe the global monetary supply uh, or the total money in, in circulation in, in the world was around 21 trillion. So if you take 21 trillion and you break it down into however many units, make up 21 trillion um so that i'm mean, off the top of my head i can't really work that one out but if you take 21 trillion and then you break that down so um one pound into 100 times 21 trillion or, or something like that it's a hell of a lot of units whereas if you take 21 million bitcoin and break that down there should be like a rough kind of balance in how many units so at the time uh, Satoshi was kind of um, creating a, a, a fixed supply that would mimic or um, represent the total supply of fiat currency in, in, in circulation. But since 2008, 2009, the central banks have just printed out of control. And especially in 2020, uh, March 2020, when the central banks started printing again, um, that there is so much more uh, in circulation than $21 trillion. Uh, so that's where the 21 million Bitcoin come from. Um, and did that make sense? It actually did. <laughs> sort of makes sense. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, okay, then we can go to the next question. Yeah. You already uh tell today as well that one bitcoin is 100 million satoshi it means that in in one uh, let's say when we go in the market and somebody is saying they buy bitcoins yeah yeah uh, actually they mean they not buying bitcoins because bitcoins is very high price, I sure. seventy thousand, something like that. They actually buy in Satoshi. Yeah. Those yeah. Stats. yeah. Why? Yeah. Why are they still telling that they buy in Bitcoin? Uh, I mean, it's just like you know, um, so uh, you know, it's just like saying someone bought, um, you know, like a thousand, a thousand pounds worth of Bitcoin the other day. Let's say. You, uh, if, if you want to get technical, you could say, uh, you know, I just bought X amount of Satoshi, but no one really says Satoshi. They say Bitcoin. That's um, some sort of crypto lingo, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you know, like um, some of the people I follow, they talk in sats, sat Satoshi. They say, uh, oh, this is X amount of sats or X amount of Satoshi. But, you know, um, for instance, you know, if you're going to make a Bitcoin payment, uh, realistically, you're, you're probably going to say, oh, um, you know, I, I just spent some Bitcoin. You're, you're probably not going to say, oh, I spent Satoshi. But if you want to get technical, you could say, oh, well, that just cost me a thousand Satoshi or, or, or something, you know, just like, um, uh, um, you know, you could say uh, something cost you, um, I, I don't know. 
uh, 10 quid, you know, you would say, um, you're, you're saying 10 quid or instead of how many pennies, you know? So um, I, I think in time, if Bitcoin continues on, on its trajectory and really does become a global uh, store of value and, and it, it really does become, you know, one, two, three hundred thousand, even a million dollars, um, then yeah, we will start talking more and more and more in, in, in Satoshis. Um, but at the moment, I think we kind of just talk in, in, in the same Bitcoin. Uh, okay. And then... uh, there are thousands of cryptocurrencies now. There is 7,800 different types, but five main ones. Is it the blockchain the same as a Bitcoin or blockchain is completely different for those? Sure. So, so first of all, there are, yeah, like you said, thousands of cryptocurrencies now, uh, just like in the dot-com boom back in the late 90s, we had all these companies coming in trying to build on the internet and become internet businesses. Uh, we now have thousands of companies and projects coming in and uh, competing to become blockchain companies. Uh, a lot of them, um, you know, uh, by the end of this explosion of innovation, there will probably only be a handful of real solid companies le left, just like in the dot-com boom, uh, when we had like the Apples, the Googles, the IBMs and the Microsofts. Okay, that's kind of the where we're going at the moment. So we start off with a lot. And over time, you know, it will shrink. Um, so Bitcoin, without going into it too much, uh, Bitcoin's blockchain is unique in the sense that it is a peer-to-peer -peer payments network. So if we just say it, it, it's a simple payments network from me to you, I can make a transaction from me to you. There's no central authority in the middle controlling it. Uh, and it's done by something called proof of work. That's the consensus that that's how the blockchain operates. It, it, it's basically, as you can see on the screen, um, we have all these computers um, that run on electricity that um, figure out uh, technical algorithms and help uh, verify transactions and, and people who manage to do it are rewarded in Bitcoin. That's how Bitcoin's created in a nutshell. But then all these other blockchains they are not necessarily trying to compete with Bitcoin. Some of them are, but a lot of the other ones are, they're building what you call Web3. So um, these other blockchains allow other companies and industries to build on top of them. So um, just think about any industry when, when there's a central or, or authority or a third party, an intermediary that oversees uh, transactions in any way, shape, or form by adopting blockchain um, or taking these technology, uh, these companies on the blockchain. It allows you and I to interact with each other via the blockchain, and we cut out that third person. So there are lots of blockchains now, but they're not the same type of blockchain as Bitcoin. Bitcoin is like a payments blockchain, let's say. But these other blockchains are a lot of them are something called proof of stake. Um, but that's we don't need to go into that. But we have now um, they're like more advanced blockchains that allow companies to build on them. Um, so I actually for that question. Um, oh, yeah, because then that follows on or uh, into the question you said about. Could you ex please expand on the uh, the Cambrian explosion slide? So yeah. if I just that was that was next one question, but I here have another question. If okay. it's on the top of this Bitcoin, uh, they they not that I understand what you said now. It's not on the top of Bitcoin. Uh, this blockchain, it's completely different blockchains. Yeah, they had their own like uh, sort of mines. Yeah. Uh, um, well, well, they have their own separate blockchain that they have nothing to do with Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin's one blockchain over okay. here. There's another okay. blockchain over here. Okay. There's another one over here. Done. Thank you. We done this one. We done. No more questions on that. Okay. My next question is about this Cambrian explosion. 
to uh, do you want to repeat this question or you go for it um yeah so so since uh bitcoin's inception 2008 2009 um uh, again bitcoin in the world of blockchains is a pretty simple basic blockchain it, it processes transactions and at the moment that's kind of what it does it's a peer-to-peer -peer payments network but some very smart people um came into this space and thought how about we try and create a blockchain that you can program or at least develop on top of um so bitcoin was the start the, the real start of the innovation um and then from the the bitcoin uh bitcoin's blockchain we had uh, like what you call it a, a cambrian explosion where um so much new technology and innovation and growth um came from from the bitcoin uh, uh idea and, and and network so this image is just showing uh, uh it's, it's just a nice visual to show um how we started with bitcoin and now we have all these different companies um web companies and all sorts now developing their own blockchains and and uh, building companies on top of it and, and literally transforming um kind of like the internet really and how we do commerce with each other um so over the next you know over the next like five to ten years um how we interact with each other uh, online and how we buy and sell stuff and how we um, yeah like from buying a house to ordering food to uh, booking a holiday to buying insurance is is going to completely change you won't actually really know that you're say when you go into a website to find some insurance you won't probably know that you're connecting to um you know the ethereum blockchain or the solana blockchain you, you that's in the background um you're just going to go to a website and it's going to be connected to the blockchain so um what i wanted to then show you is um just a list of some of the um some of the uh like the the, the industries that blockchain is disrupting um and here it is so yeah, uh, banking is only the beginning. Uh, so like I said, with banking, it was a uh, Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer payments network. Um, but yeah, uh, these are all the industries um, that uh, blockchain is, is is disrupting, meaning that uh, it's, um, well, when we talk about a disruptive technology, we're referring to a technology that can literally um, transform uh, the current status quo of of the market, let's say. So um, I'm just going to scroll down and then I'll stop. OK, so, yeah, financial services, um, for instance, um, banking. Um, at the moment, we put our money or currency into a central bank or, or I should say a, a high street bank, but it's a central centralized banking system. So we actually we actually give legal ownership to the bank whenever we make a deposit, uh, which a lot of us uh, don't don't actually uh, or aren't aware of that um and for instance yeah it's going to completely transform like the stock market um but we don't um uh, i mean yeah because i mean th th there's so much um discrepancies and uh human error uh, but we're, we're basically trying to uh remove human error corruption greed that sadly human beings can uh do uh, especially when we're talking about uh, the financial world um but even like like crowdfunding which is really cool so um this is one thing i really like so for instance with a with, with the blockchain instead of so at the moment um let's say with crowdfunding I, i've never personally done it myself but you know uh, someone wants to raise some money for a project uh you have to trust in a a, a central author or yeah like an eden a, a third party to hold on to those funds, keep them safe, don't lose them and don't steal them. Okay. With crowdfunding on the blockchain, we don't have to trust in a human being. We can trust in code and math mathematics. And um, we would say if we wanted to raise um, some money to build a, a project, um, everyone would um, you know, invest or donate those funds would be held on the blockchain in a in a wallet that everyone would be able to see 
you and I would be able to log on and see the funds in the wallet. We're not trusting in someone at the bank or something. We can all log on and see and, and verify that's the money. There's my percentage. There's yours, et cetera, et cetera. And then if the project manager goes through and, and sticks to his or her word, then or, or achieves certain goals or goalposts of the project, we can program this money to, okay, the project has hit X milestone, then the next sum of money will be sent to the project. Um, and the blockchain, the blockchain can store and verify um, this process without having to uh, trust, again, in that third party, that human being, to oversee the project and everyone can see it. And let's say the project doesn't succeed or someone, um, yeah, it doesn't succeed, then the funds can be returned back. We can program it. So the funds will be returned back to, um, you know, you and I, uh, back to our wallets and everything is open source. It's all uh, verifiable and we can all, it's transparent, transparency, um yeah so it's really brilliant so yeah so basically i mean this website i mean like people could go through all day long uh and this is one thing i really like like wills and inheritances again um you know you again you can literally like program a will it sounds nuts um but uh instead of trusting in someone to manage the will because i mean i've heard there's so many horror stories of of wills and inheritances going wrong um again because of human beings um, we can basically remove that or drastically uh, reduce the risk um, by uh, adopting blockchain technology. Again, uh, accounting, um, loans and credit. Again, um, so this is one thing I really like about bit, uh, cryptocurrency is um, let's say you've got a really bad credit rating and the bank won't lend to you or, or, or the bank are just... Um, trying to screw you for every penny. They're going to give you really high interest rates and, you know, they're just going to sting you. You know, they want your house, they want your car, they want everything as collateral, let's say. You know, the blockchain doesn't judge, you know. You know, if you have some cryptocurrency, you can lock that up as collateral and then, and then borrow against it. And, and, you know, it doesn't judge if you sadly had a bad you know spell a few years ago you know um and another thing is i can um take my cryptocurrency and in, uh, okay in the banking system right now um what you're earning well, well you're not earning money really are you you're not earning interest on your deposits um it's like 0.01 percent i think jp morgan is but I could take my funds, I could lock them up in something called a stable coin, which is a um, basically like a, a cryptocurrency, which is pegged to the value of $1. So it's fairly stable in, in, in the world of currencies. Um, I can lend it out. And then, you know, I, I could use one protocol called Anchor. And at the moment, they offer 19.5% APR a year. Um, you know, not, not almost 20%. Whereas in the bank, you're going to get, you know, 0.01%. So, I mean, it, it cuts out the middleman. It cuts out the greedy banker, basically. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So, um, so that is basically a really good website. What is it? It's cbinsights.com uh, yeah, forward slash research slash um, industries uh, disruptive uh, blockchain. Uh, if anyone wants to go look. Uh, I have a question. You said that, uh, yeah, if... Uh, you with bad credit, you cannot get loans and credits you then cannot get in a bank. Uh, crypto, you can against whatever cryptocurrency is in your wallet. Yeah. Uh, yeah how yeah. much actually have to be in your wallet to, to do this? Um, it, it really depends on the platform, um, what their... Um, what their rates are and um and kind of like what cryptocurrency you want to borrow or or what currency cryptocurrency they will accept as collateral um so there's a few different platforms for that there's a celsius uh block i mean i mean literally I, I can't actually keep up with 
the amount of um, platforms that are popping up now um, that allow you to borrow and lend. Um, and th th then you go down the, the kind of the road of, is it a centralized lending platform or is it a decentralized lending platform? And you know, that's a whole other subject that, that, mm. that goes into DeFi, decentralized finance. And yeah, it's wild. It's, it's pretty impressive. I just, I just think some of those uh, viewers who is watching at the moment, maybe be interested to yeah absolutely yeah yeah yeah. Um, and and no i'm trying to um okay so also just a full disclaimer uh I'm, I'm not a financial advisor and um and also um some of these projects have uh, stood the, um stood the test of time so they're 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 fully audited um they're you know uh, incredibly safe uh and uh and yeah, they're, they're fantastic. Some projects are a lot newer, they still haven't been audited. So some of these projects um, may have bugs in the code because they haven't been audited yet. So again, we're, we're, we're still, even though we're like 13 years down the road since Bitcoin really, we're still in the early days. So some very good, absolutely amazing, uh, but then some um, uh, are still very new so um when you go into the kind of the world of DeFi, decentralized finance there are different websites that kind of rate the um like the returns the safety and all this kind of stuff of the platforms um but yeah uh, it, it really is worth some um people um looking into um because uh it really is a great thing one thing i did forget to add is there's a great YouTube um, video um, by the YouTube channel, The Defiant. And uh, it's like an introduction to DeFi. Yeah, I think it's like an hour and 20 minutes long, um, which I recommend people look at. And that is, it, I mean, it, it's quite technical, but it, 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 if you watch it, it might plant a few seeds and maybe help explain things a bit better. So yeah, um, and also, the banking system at the moment we are going through a so money's going digital whether we like it or not uh, but it's going to be two different types of digital we've got decentralized cryptocurrencies like the stuff we're talking about and then we've got centralized currencies which are the central okay. bank digital pardon what's the difference between decentralized and centralized sure okay so 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 the fiat currency that you and i so, so the money we have in our pocket i mean that's a bit of paper but the money we have in the bank the digital um that is a centralized currency meaning that the government and the central banks and the banking system have complete control over that um there are I imagine there are central servers where you know you can you know like you can go to the building of JP Morgan, let's say. With decentralized cryptocurrencies, um, there is no CEO, there is no headquarters um, for a lot of these projects. There are for some, but that's a whole other subject. Um, meaning that so Bitcoin, um, you know, you can't ring up the CEO, you can't go to the headquarters. Bitcoin doesn't have a headquarters. There are servers or miners, the miners that that power the network are literally all over the world. You you literally cannot shut it down. Um, so yeah, that, that is decentralized. And, and, and really, that is what we need. We need, uh, as money becomes uh, digital, uh, I for one will do whatever I can to not be part of the central bank digital currency surveillance system, basically, because this digital currency that the Bank of England and the um, the Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank, all the central banks in the world are producing a digital digital currency, but they will have 100% control over your finances. They will know how you spend your money, when you spend your money, and even why. I mean, they will literally have algorithms recording your spending habits, the food you bought that week. Um, it's like unbelievable. And, it, and, and if you don't agree to certain government agendas and i can think of a few right now that the government are pushing down our throats um then then the central bank literally will have the power and the authority to just boom turn your turn your account off or penalize you it already happens in china um 
you know, something like a third of Chinese can no longer get on public transport because they've got a black tick against their name because maybe they jaywalked or they didn't they didn't make a payment in time. You know, it's it really is a, not a good thing. So that is a centralized digital currency that our central banks, our banking system at the moment, the central banks are literally racing to bring out at the moment. So decentralized is stuff like Bitcoin and, and some of these other uh, cryptocurrencies. So yeah, it's well worth understanding. That's why we are here tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's go to another slide. Yeah, what, what would what Next you want to was Ethereum blockchain. You said you said the Ethereum blockchain. Yes, yes, Ethereum blockchain. Yes, sorry, my mm. pronunciation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I thought you said that. Yeah, yeah. So the Ethereum blockchain was so we had Bitcoin, and then that, uh, that was a peer-to-peer -peer payments network. It still is. Uh, and then someone called uh, or the creator of Ethereum, uh, Vitalik Buterin. Um, he's like a Russian American young. I think he's like must be in his thirties now. But he's <laughs> pretty young. Um, he wanted to create a blockchain that you could program. Uh, you could use something called smart contracts. So that was what I was talking about um, with all the different industries that we could disrupt mm -hmm. or blockchain can disrupt. So this is just this is a photo I found the other day of just different sectors, industries that are building on top of the Ethereum blockchain. So at this, the moment, pardon? This Ethereum blockchain is just another blockchain yeah it's another blockchain yeah yeah it's another blockchain um and then underneath uh, so, so ethereum really is the 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 current the current leader in smart contract uh blockchains meaning let's just say programmable blockchains that allow us to build on top of them Mm. Um, and then underneath we have some newer blockchains. Uh, so we've got Solana, Polkadot, Cardano, Cosmos. Uh, we've got Terra Luna. We've got um, Phantom, Avalanche. I mean, the, the list goes on. And they all have their own ecosystems. So th this is uh, a, 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 a touch on the uh, Ethereum blockchain ecosystem. Um, so, so th there are there are many, uh, not just five, but I literally just for this slide, I just picked five of the top blockchains. Let's just say smart contract blockchains. Um, so yeah, so at the moment, what we're seeing is um, all these companies building on and all these blockchains, which is uh, it's really cool. It is really fascinating to see. It, it's you don't have to for anyone watching this. You don't have to understand if you don't want to, every aspect of blockchain and cryptocurrency, if you just understand the basics of kind of what it is and why it's here, the problems it's trying to solve, and hopefully I can do a half decent job of explaining some of that, then at least you're aware of kind of where money and technology is moving. And I, for one, if we are gonna go into this digital era, I want to be on the right side, the, the, the correct side of the digital world. Don't get me wrong. I still love, I mean, I'm outside, you know, a lot of the day. I, you know, I, I'm old school. I still love, you know, if I don't have to be on a computer, I will not be on a computer. However, if money and technology is going this way and money doesn't bring happiness, but money sure does help situations. You can use it for both good and bad. Um, I, I, for one, want to be aware of what we're going towards and how to best um, position myself for me and my family and help help out decent people along the way. So, yeah, that is, in a nutshell, um, a touch on the next generation blockchains after Bitcoin. Does that does that make sense a bit? I It makes sense for me, but uh, I saw this first video, so... Everybody, Again. welcome to go and watch the, the video of what we're talking about yeah. on my www.dctcenter.com website and on my Facebook page, DCT Center. 
where Jackie kindly let me put her video. So, and and also, so uh, like I think the first documentary I watched uh, a few years ago was called Banking on Bitcoin. Um, so that's quite a good one. Uh, I think there's another one called like Bitcoin Documentary. I mean, there, there's loads now. I, to be honest, I, I kind of like can't keep up with them. Uh, Bitcoin Documentary, which is about 40 minutes long, which kind of gives a really nice overview of um or, or of bitcoin and cryptocurrency but banking on bitcoin that kind of gives the the real start of where it all came from that's really good i think now we came to security yeah buying selling crypto and security yeah 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 uh yeah cool <clears throat> okay so um so uh I, I just want to touch on something quickly to say that because some people still are oh, crypto is digital. I, I, I like to touch, I like to touch, uh, I like to touch physical stuff, which I totally understand. I totally get that. But it's something like out of all the money or the currency, because we don't really uh, have money anymore. We have currency because um, money basically, money, money, sorry about getting into it too much, but money, um, uh, is a store of value currency is not a store of value uh, like gold is a form of money because it holds its purchasing power but currency is just a paper receipt that is no longer backed up by money but anyway yeah i just because i'm about to start talking about currency so not about 97 percent, i think of the world's currency money but currency technically is digital um only about 3% is actually paper, and, and, and that's the stuff that we have in the cash point. Um, but anyway, so the sooner we can appreciate that basically money is digital, it's, it's a lot easier to kind of bridge over to crypto. Um, so then going on to that is all money is digital, let's just say it already is. So with cryptocurrency, it is 100% digital. There is no um, real paper crypto um so um just to touch on so what you do is if you want to say buy some you would go to an exchange excuse me uh rich maybe uh let's go to how what will happen i at the moment have in my bank 250 pounds I won't start investing in crypto, yeah? Yep. Now, I'm sitting at the PC at home with 250 on my pocket. Not pocket exactly, but in a bank. Yep. What I'm doing next. Cool. So what you want to do, I, I mean, uh, you're going to want to go to an exchange. Um, uh, the easiest one would be Coinbase. So an exchange is is somewhere where you go to buy. Well, you go to buy and sell. Um, and this uh, a cryptocurrency exchange. So for instance, the easiest one to really kind of get your head around is Coinbase. Uh, new uh, people new to crypto tend to go to Coinbase first of all because it's just the most user user friendly one. And then as you get more and more used to uh how you buy and sell crypto you can use um other, other cryptocurrency exchanges like coinbase pro um binance uh, they're, they're just slightly more technical but for today we're going to just talk about coinbase um and there's a ton of videos on youtube um that's how i learned it's just a ton of youtube videos but on, on how to set it up but literally what you're going to do is you're going to go to Coinbase, and I know it sounds silly here, um, but make sure the website says Coinbase.com, and the connection the connection is secure, because there are some there's a lot of scammy stuff out there these days. So there might be like a spelling uh, like a spelling mistake or something, you know, which you might not. This will all look the same, but the website address might be different. But yeah, so make sure you're at Coinbase.com. And then you're going to go get started and then you're literally just going to go through you're going to create an account 
you're going to um, put in uh, your ID. So that could be a driver's license or a passport. I, it, I literally helped a friend the other day set this up. It, it, it's, it's, it's really quite straightforward. Um, you know, um, w w we've all done a lot more complex things than setting up a Coinbase account. So what you're going to do is you're going to set up a Coinbase account for, as an example, and then you can connect your, um, you can connect your say bank card to Coinbase. So you can make a payment um, uh, or, or what, I'm, what I should say is you can then buy some Bitcoin or some Ethereum or some Solana or any of these cryptocurrencies on the exchange using your bank card. So that's like the, I would say the easiest and the first step um, what people can do. And what I recommend is literally just doing this process and then buying some buying some bitcoin and then you know just kind of getting a feel for what it is maybe read about some of the other ones um and just kind of start understanding what this whole space is all about so but to, to, to um, let's say let's say the market's gone up or, or you think do you know what i i i want to sell it now you can literally then go to your uh, account um, and you can very easily just hit sell and then you'll be able to sell it into pounds or you'll be able to sell it into euros um, you could even sell it for another cryptocurrency so uh, coinbase is probably the easiest start for someone to test the test the waters um and then sorry uh, let's say i go that i set up this account yeah i'm yeah. buying decided let's say to to buy how many sets i can buy for this 250 pounds yeah yeah then till i actually press this button sell yeah nothing will happen they will just this amount will set in my my wallet so, so, so you will buy some Bitcoin, let's say, and, and that Bitcoin will be like held in your wallet on your Coinbase account. Yeah. And, 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 and it will stay there as, as, as long as you leave it there. Um, and then let's say the price goes up or you think, do you know what? I want to sell. You can go to your account and you, and you will literally be able to hit sell. And then, then it will probably give you some options of what you can sell it into. Um, so, yeah, like I said, um, maybe some pounds or euros, or maybe you could sell it for some Ethereum. Or um, I haven't used Coinbase in, in quite a long time, so um, I, I forget what the options are now that, that you could sell it for. But how it is in a stock market, if it's going, let's say, price going down, this means you have to buy it when when price going up you have to sell it yeah well it depends what you want to do if you're a trader um you know if, if you want to be a trader and you're you know what you're doing then in theory yeah you're going to buy low and sell high but some people because uh sorry one thing i've got to mention it uh but we touch on it from the oh i go into it on the on, on the video with jackie is is Bitcoin was designed as a as a kind of number one. Uh, well, it, it, it's a form of digital money outside of central bank and government control. It, it's it's like a in, in inflation hedge because if we literally just hold on to pounds and euros or dollars in the bank, they're losing money by the minute. It's crazy. They, sorry, they're using they're losing value by the minute. So Bitcoin is not only a digital uh, form of money, um, it's also aiming to be, and it is, it's a volatile store of value, but it is a store of value. So a lot of people, like people buy gold to preserve their wealth, um, bit, uh, people buy Bitcoin to preserve and grow their wealth. So I know a lot of people that literally just buy Bitcoin and they're never really ever going to sell it um, because they want to preserve the, their purchasing power. So, so some people will literally just buy it and hold it for years as, as an insurance um, or, you know, 
an insurance against the current monetary system or they will uh, hold on to it for years and then sell it down the line um, for uh, like like a pension, you know. Um, so um, so it, it, it's all down to the individual of what their goals are, what they want from it and all that. Um, Sorry, Rich. Uh, we can we can actually uh, store it and keep it like like pension or whatever savings account, yeah. But what will happen if, let's say, bank going down? So many people are used losing huge amounts of money just because bank went down and they're not going to to give you anything back just just some kind of percentage from what you had in the bank yeah what yeah. will happen because i hear from few sources around that bitcoin actually is possibility to going down what will happen with this bitcoin what i brought if it's going down when you mean going down, do you mean going down in value or disappearing? Disappearing, actually. That is, is rumors around that Bitcoin will disappear. Something else, which one at the moment is very low in the price and very nearly invisible, possibly will be growing, yeah, and Bitcoin going down. Okay, so again, I don't have a crystal ball, um, so I sadly can't. Uh, predict the future but I just go on what I see in front of me um, and in the world of cryptocurrency and literally the financial world all the biggest now all the biggest banks and um, massive companies in the world they are buying billions of dollars of bitcoin bitcoin as it stands as it stands today has a very bright future it would appear with the amount of investment going into it and the amount of companies building or integrating with Bitcoin and its blockchain. So uh, as it stands from what I can literally physically see in front of me, there is so much innovation and capital flowing into cryptocurrency and you know, definitely Bitcoin. Um, as it stands, I find it hard to believe that Bitcoin is gonna disappear However, if the internet disappears and the whole of the digital world disappears, then all of the digital world goes, everything, all digital goes, central banking, um, uh, you know, all of that and everything. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, so if that goes, then everything goes. Um, but I mean, that's why for me personally, um, I'm, I'm still very much open to, um, like, like the physical. So like owning some land or at some point I may own precious metals like gold and that, uh, I don't at the moment. Um, but yeah, so I think what you try to say is don't put your, all your eggs in one basket. Sure. Yeah. That. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And another saying I like is "Don't bet the farm." Um, you know, because even though, even though uh, there is an overwhelming body of evidence to support that Bitcoin isn't going anywhere, and if we have in if we have internet and just power energy, then we have Bitcoin. Um, but yeah. Um, again, I, I, I'm not psychic. I, I've heard from a number of different people um their theories on where we're going to be in the next five or ten years and um i will absolutely uh, that that's why i think it's key for people to be aware of of what's going on in the world because then we can do our best to make the most educated um you know uh, moves um and we have a action plan you know so, uh, so yeah, uh, I hope that answers it a, a little bit. Yeah, I think we now can go to this safe, how, how we can actually make sure the money is safe to keep there. Yeah, so... With all the ledgers. 
Yeah, sure. So if I quickly go back to the slide. Yeah, brilliant. So we touched on um, exchanges. So yeah, uh, we have the centralized exchanges like Coinbase and Binance and KuCoin and Kraken. They're just some of the top ones. They are centralized. They actually have like a like pretty much like a headquarters, a building. We have decentralized exchanges, which um, is basically just code. And let's not go into that too much because that is let's not bite off too much more than we can chew tonight. <laughs> um, so, so what you can, yeah, because it, it, it's such a deep subject. Um, so you can buy your Bitcoin, let's just say, and you can leave it on Coinbase. Okay. It is, um, but you, your trust in that Coinbase is going to take care of your Bitcoin and that, you know, everything's safe, blah, 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 blah. Um, the thing is with cryptocurrency is cryptocurrency, uh, if you buy some Bitcoin or you have a Bitcoin wallet, you have it on the Bitcoin on Coinbase. Um, that wallet has a public key and a private key. Again, there's so many videos online that will, you know, you can listen to over and over again to get a better understanding. But you have just bought some Bitcoin on Coinbase you will have a public key and that's your address, your public key address that you send your Bitcoin to that address. So if I bought some somewhere else and I wanted to send it to my Coinbase account, I would send it to my Bitcoin public address. Uh, then you have the private key address. Now the private key is, um, I, I kind of call it like, like the master key that signs the transactions. So um, Coinbase will have that private key so when you want to send that Bitcoin somewhere, the private key will, uh, that is kept on Coinbase will sign the transaction. The issue is if someone manages to get hold of that private key from Coinbase or hack it or something, they potentially can get hold of your Bitcoin and send it somewhere else. So the safest way to store cryptocurrency is on something called a hardware wallet, uh, which is called cold storage, meaning it is offline. It is not no longer connected to the internet, like on Coinbase, that is a hot wallet. It is connected to the internet all the time. So uh, I've got their ledger and trezor. So this is my, let me try and, can you see that? Yes. Okay, cool, so that is my ledger stick. So the difference is, Okay, now, first of all, all cryptocurrency is, is digital. It's, it's kept on the blockchain. The actual cryptocurrency itself isn't kept in your Coinbase wallet or it isn't kept on the stick. Um, it's on the blockchain, up in the cloud, let's say, but you control the, tra you control the flow of your Bitcoin from either your Coinbase account, which is the hot wallet, where you can send it or you or you do it from your hardware wallet so the difference is is the private key that makes the transaction so i go i want to send um 100 quid's worth of bitcoin to you i would um i uh, sign the transaction i approve it by using this stick because uh, the private key is kept on here um, it's not connected to the internet. So in order for that Bitcoin to move, I have to sign the transaction use, using this um, instead of leaving it on the Coinbase um, website, let's say. So what I would do is I would literally with my uh, USB, I would plug it into my computer. I would go to Ledger Live, which is the interface that allows me to interact with whatever cryptocurrency I'm using, the blockchain, I will then literally click on the app and then just click like confirm. Um, so if you are gonna go down, uh, you know, down the crypto rabbit hole and start buying crypto, uh, learn about cold storage ha uh, hardware wallets like Ledger. Now me personally, and a lot of people I follow, recommend Ledger over any other um, uh, hardware wallet. I do have Trezor, but Trezor, 
um, it doesn't hold as many um, currents, cryptocurrencies as Ledger. Ledger just seems to be quicker. They have, in my experience, better customer service. They um, they just seem to be faster at keeping up with with, with the with where this where this industry is going, and um, and more cryptocurrencies are connected to Ledger than Trezor. So in my again, you can do what you want. You can you can read reviews and make your own decision. But in my experience, Ledger is the way forward. So that's. Um, that is basically uh, a very that is like the, the safest way for you to keep your Bitcoin, uh, let's say, safe is by using the cold, the, the cold storage, the hardware wallet. Uh, then maybe you can give to our viewers uh, this sites, which one is fake ones? Yeah, brilliant. Uh, well done. Um, Okay, cool. Yeah, so I literally typed in uh, the other day uh, crypto scams or, or I clicked on something anyway. Um, and okay, here we go. Uh, again, uh, I, you know, I don't normally look up crypto scams. So, but when I Googled it, um, there are a few websites that list them. Um, and this is uh, a 2021 update. Um, and if you scroll down, uh, maybe there's a search. Yeah, I mean, I think there is a search here. Um, but if you go down, um, <laughs> it was a uh, quite a long list. Uh, hang on, where are we? Come on. Yeah. So um, yeah. So it uh, here's a here's a good thing. Um, it, if a family friend uh, or someone is trying to get you to sign up to um, you know, to a, to a crypto opportunity or a third party trading platform where you get paid out daily, weekly or month, monthly. And, oh, my God, it's amazing. All I do is I just deposit some Bitcoin and boom, I get paid every week or month. Um, I would literally go online and I would do some due diligence and I would have a little look around and see. I would read forums and stuff. But. And also, I would literally go to this website. Um, what's this called? Scamnewschannel.com. Um, but again, just just go online and search the name of this project or opportunity or whatever, you know, like, uh, and then go down here and just see if it's listed. But also, what I will say, and this is one thing I want people to be um, uh, aware of, is because the market's really taken off now, we have so much new, so many new people come into this space. Scammers, it is an absolute field day for scammers. It is so easy for scammers to make money and steal your money. And a lot of these, um, uh, so never click on an email that says Bitcoin, whatever, like just, just be really mindful about what you're clicking on. Never give away any information to any random email um, that you get, especially in your junk email, because I get so many scam Bitcoin emails. It's unbelievable. Um, some of them are like, uh, they say, oh, Elon Musk has developed a new Bitcoin or, or Richard Branson has done this or Dragon's Den, uh, Peter... Uh, what's his name? Uh, I don't know. Um, has like honestly, the list is endless, and, and, and they'll take a, a, a public figure, and they'll say, "Oh, um, you know, Peter Jones. That's the one." Uh, is so, um, someone sent me it? Peter Jones has uh, left Dragon's Den or something, and he's now gone full time on this Bitcoin system, um, and he's making more money than he ever made, and. Yeah, it's, it's a straight up scam. So um, definitely do some Googling. Um, now, one thing to be really mindful of is um, there are a lot of these third party um, Bitcoin trading platforms um, popping up now. Um, and they've actually been around for a couple of years. 
where um, you deposit some money, uh, this third party um, trading platform will trade your Bitcoin or your currency um, and then pay you on a daily or weekly or whatever to your wallet. And, you know, people go, oh, it's amazing. I'm making all this money and I'm building a team. A lot of these are multi-level marketing. Um, ones to be really mindful of are Hyperfund, uh, cash effects, and I know some people are going to be like, ah, oh, no, cash effects is legit, blah, 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 blah. There are so many red flags with cash effects and hyperfund. It's like unbelievable. Uh, because uh, four years ago, when I started hearing about Bitcoin again, um, it was actually a family friend that said, oh, yeah, Rich, um, I'm making all this money through this trading platform. I said, oh, wow, cool. Look how much money you've made. So I put some money in, started making some money. I was like, oh, this is cool. Within about two or three months, because I started to really enjoy learning about Bitcoin, I was like, I think I'm in a scam. <laughs> <laughs> and then when the market finally um, uh, crashed, because it all mar- what goes up must come down, it is part of Bitcoin's four-year cycle, uh, which is, I think, now we're going to go into a lengthening cycle. But anyway, um, so then when the market crashed in 2018, all these trading platforms that everyone were talking about, they all disappeared. They all disappeared because no more money was coming into this industry. So the guys behind these scams um, literally take all your Bitcoin and just disappear. And, it, and it's so sad because I saw a lot of people lose a lot of money. Um, and, and we're literally in that time four years ago forward and i have so many people messaging me saying oh rich what do you think of this or um i'll look at this or oh uh, my friends made like 20k a month or something and i'm like if you're making 20k a month literally and you got into crypto six months ago you're either the most smartest trader and investor to ever walk this planet or there's a high high chance that you've got into one of these multi-level marketing platforms, you've built a team and you're making money, sadly, from new people signing up. And as soon as the sign-ups stop, the, the thing will just collapse. And the thing is about cash effects is, um, I mean, there's so many red flags, but one of them is, uh, for instance, they, they say stuff like, uh, you know, you buy these packages, um, you know, for whatever, and they trade in, uh, FX for an exchange, but they pay you in Bitcoin. And to me, I think, why are you trading in FX and then paying them in Bitcoin? Uh, why aren't you paying them in FX? And also, to me, if you're if 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 you're paying them in Bitcoin, or at least you're buying Bitcoin with it, it's a lot harder to track and trace than it is usually with FX. Um, <clears throat> and also, I know some people that are waiting like nine weeks. For their for their their, their payouts, uh, their you know their their withdrawals, um, and when and someone told me who was a friend of mine was almost about to get into cash effects, and I said, I personally highly recommended she did not, and 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 I said because um, Bitcoin had a, a bit of a heavy sell off in I think April May, and all of a sudden cash effects stopped stopped um, paying out. And and I said, well, hang on a minute, what, why, are they, why are they stopping paying out? And she said, oh, because the price of Bitcoin's gone down. And I said, well, that doesn't make sense at all, because if the price of Bitcoin goes down, number one, they're trading in foreign exchange. So they're trading, let's say, the euro against the dollar. That's how they, that's how they generate their money, through trading FX. If they're paying you in Bitcoin, they, they should be able to get more Bitcoin because the value of it's gone down. And, and any proper trader or trading entity, when the market crashes, you short the market. So you make money on the way down as you do on the way up. So, I mean, that was just like two red flags straight off, straight off the cuff. But then if you dive into it, um, I, I don't know. I just, even if they say they've got headquarters in Panama or Dubai, it, yeah, just, I, I won't go on too much more. I just want to say, Learn, learn how to do this stuff yourself. Don't outsource your financial health or your financial freedom to a third party because it, it appears easy money. If it sounds too good to be true, it usually 
is too good to be true. Um, so yeah, anyway, enough of that. So yeah, these are all the these are just a list of the scams. I did scroll down and actually cash effects were what was listed on here. Um, I'm not trying to uh, look, some people are gonna disagree with me and all this, but you know, wait and see, wait and see when the bear market kicks in if cash effects are still around. And if you're waiting, you know, weeks, months, years for your for your money, that might not ever come back. Just just learn to do it yourself, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, so so that's kind of touching on the scams. The security we've touched on with the ledger. Um, I think we pretty much touch on everything, to be honest. We already a little bit more than over, so. Okay, cool. Are yeah, you we... want to finish or you have something else prepared for us to actually? Um, no, I'm literally just going through the list that you sent me. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it would be smart if, uh, uh, to, for anyone to go back and watch the video with Jackie and I. Um, and, then, and then if there are some more questions, um, we can potentially line up another call. Um, but yeah, uh, one thing also um, we, uh, I pulled up, which I forgot to show, is um, if you just want to, I mean, it might be a bit overwhelming, but for instance, if you go to coinmarketcap.com, or another one is coingecko.com. You can literally, um, this shows all the all, all the cryptocurrencies really. So at, at the top, they're, they're, they're listed in market cap, meaning the amount of money in that asset. So at the moment, Bitcoin's market cap is $909 uh, billion. And then, and then underneath we have Ethereum, which is that smart contract platform uh, blockchain. And that's at the moment got a $480 billion market cap. And, and then it drops right back down. So these are all the list of different uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, you know, we spoke about Polkadot, Avalanche, and Terra earlier. Um, mm -hmm. So it's actually very useful information, I think, for viewers. Yeah, I know. I, to be honest, I, I, it slipped my mind. So I'm glad it's, it, um, I remembered. Um, so what you can do is uh, let's say you hear your friend talking about a cryptocurrency. Um, let's say, I don't know, um, one project I quite like is Injective. So what, or, or let's say someone is um, saying to me, oh, you've got to look at this project. Um, you can type in the name at the top. You can then click, click on it and hopefully it's going to load. But it's not loading. Um, why are you not loading? Oh, hang on. So I think the internet was playing up. So yeah. So so then what you can do? You can start doing a bit of research. So so we can see here Injective Protocol, um, which is a it, it's a it's, it's an exchange for derivatives. But that's a whole other subject. Um, it's currently ranked two hundred and four. We can scroll down. And we can see that its market cap is currently 372 million. Um, and then we can look at its supply. So it's got a max supply of 100 million, a circulating supply of 43. Um, but what you can do is you can then go down. First of all, there will be a website. So you can uh, go here, you can click on the website. Um, this is, uh, again, I don't want to go into too much, too much, but this is the contract address. So this is the actual address that you, or, 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 or let's say like the cryptocurrency you're buying. Um, so you, you would use that to um, put on different exchanges, let's say. Um, but what I do just want to show you is, for instance, if you wanted to buy this cryptocurrency, you would scroll down. Okay, so... It, it, here's like some charts, but you would go to something called markets. You click on markets, and now what it does is it lists all the exchanges that this cryptocurrency is listed on. Um, so you would go down, I mean, I believe it's on, is it on Coinbase yet? Coinbase Pro? But for instance, with Binance, and I do recommend people Get used to Coinbase, but Binance is definitely a, a really good uh, cryptocurrency exchange that has a long list of different um, 
uh, cryptos that, 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 that you can buy. And then, you know, you can come along here and you can buy on Binance because you always buy it with a pair. You, it's always a pair. So, for instance, you would go here and you would buy Injective with USDT, which is a, it's a stable coin. Um, so you would literally, I've just clicked on it and it's now going to take me to the Binance exchange. And again, this is where I recommend watching some YouTube videos on how to navigate Binance or Coinbase or something. But I don't want to confuse anyone because Binance is definitely a more complex thing. But you would literally send your USDT to, um, to Binance. You can see here, INJ against USDT. You would scroll down and then you could even put the price in you want to buy or you can just buy it right now. But again... There are so many, and I mean like hundreds, if not thousands of videos on um, YouTube of people showing you how to buy cryptocurrency from Coinbase, from Binance, from any one of these exchanges. So if you're in a position where you want to buy something from maybe Binance, but you're not too switched on, what I used to do back in the day is I would literally go onto YouTube and type in how to buy Bitcoin on Binance. And literally on YouTube, there will be blah, 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 all these videos of people mm -hmm. showing you, click here, click here, do this, do that. And after a while, you kind of just get used to it, but start small, you know, start moving 10 pounds worth of crypto from wallet A to wallet B and buy it and then sell it and then pull it off and, and set your stick up and then maybe deposit, send some Bitcoin to your stick. And then from your stick, then send it back to the exchange. Just get comfortable moving small amounts of crypto before you go all in. Because if you send crypto to the wrong address, it's gone. There is no customer service you can ring up and say, oh, sorry, can you just send me that Bitcoin I've just sent back, please? It doesn't work like that. Part of the power or the, um, the, the uniqueness of being your own bank by being in control is that um, you need to educate yourself to be how to control your own funds. Because if you, if you send it somewhere else, then, yeah, there's a very high chance you won't get it back. So you just... Again, get comfortable, get educated, watch a ton of YouTube videos and um, start small and, uh, and kind of just, just go from there, really. But, um, but my video, that first video, just to conclude, if you go back to that uh, video I did with Jackie, towards the end, like I said, like you've seen it, um, that list of resources, there's a ton of people that you can start following and literally just go into YouTube and type in um you know what is bitcoin and then just start watching videos on people explaining it but one thing i do recommend it is the the youtube series uh the hidden secrets of money by mike maloney and that will give you the kind of like last 100 200 years of of, of why we're in this situation how money got us into this or, or how central banking and governments got us into this mess and why Bitcoin and crypto is a, a very strong contender for helping us in the future. I think that would be all what we will cover tonight. Brilliant. Yeah. Fantastic. It's it's for for people who never never done it like myself. It's quite a lot to think and to chew on at the moment. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But again, start small. You know, spend some time watching some videos and get comfortable. Just yeah. Get comfortable with that, really. Thank you very much, Rich, for coming tonight and sharing your knowledge with us. Oh, you're, and... absolutely, you're absolutely welcome. Let me just try and make it bigger. And for, for uh, everybody, I can say, please send me questions if you have some. When we have collected more questions rich is happy to come back and uh, speak to us again so uh, please send questions on my email address 
daiga.miller.dctcenter.com Subject question crypto. Uh, also, if you would like to support our work, you can buy us coffee on PayPal link, which will be included under the video. And the uh, PayPal link at the moment is actually my email address, daiga.miller at dctcenter.com. All your donations will be shared between us and will be greatly appreciated. Hope I, you get some basic knowledge from this video. I certainly get, and I hope you are you will get to. And please, please go check out on my website www.dctcenter.com and uh, Facebook page DCT Center. Check out Jackie's White's video with. Uh, rich to actually be more complex this picture what we we done today yeah and get more understanding for everything thank you very much for watching bye for now and god bless